are live. Greetings, 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 and uh, welcome to Heal Talk Tuesday. This is Lisa. It is amazing. What a beautiful day it is today. Why? Because I have one of the most amazing guests, honored guests, and it is Forbes Riley. None other than Forbes Riley. So, Forbes, welcome to Heal Talk, Real Talk. It's an honor. I love it. And I actually love that heal is a double entendre between our high heels and healing yourself. I think you are a very <laughs> amazing, wonderful woman, Miss Liza. And I'm happy to be here. Let's do some inspiration. Yes, let's. So today, um, today is amazing in one way. Months ago, I, I truly manifested you because you were on a different platform. And what I did when I saw you, I was like, one day you're going to be next to me or I'm going to be standing next to you, to you on a stage. And as so many ladies know, I have an event called 3E. So it was like one day Forbes is going to be on my stage. And here you are, the biggest stage in life. It's called Facebook. So thank you. Well, I love that. You know, when you first met me, you came to me with so much energy and passion and just a delight that I, I was just enamored with you. And so we have a great relationship. We have a lot of fun things to talk about. And I have to say, first of all, for everyone who knows you, have you guys seen how Lisa has transformed? How you look beautiful, relaxed, energetic, open. It is nothing short of a miracle. So I'm so happy to be part of your life and thank you. Thank you. So for those of you who do really do not know who Forbes is, what rock are you Riley, on? <laughs> is an award-winning TV host, founder of CEO of Jim, uh, the Spin Gym. She is an American actress, a TV host, author, pro, uh, podcast, uh, spokesperson, motivational keynote coach, and you know, one of the best coaches. As a really? Coach, no, wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's, let's, I, love that, I love that you're reading my bio, but one of the best coaches. What makes me such a good coach? And I'll tell you what, because I usually don't go to therapy, but one of the things is when I have clients come and they are hesitant until they get to know my approach, I was the same way with you. I was hesitant and I went and signed up on your pitch class, which I think every single one of my audience anyone in business needs to be on your pitch class. Why? Because you taught us not to be selling, but making offers and how to do a pitch. So you are an incredible coach. Thank you. So I'll give you just a little bit of background because I love that you are beaming and you're so sweet and you have been through my training and we do something crazy. We're going to give you an amazing free offer uh, care of Lisa. So that's all coming down the pike. Stay tuned. And what we're talking about right now is I am someone who sold a little over two and a half billion dollars worth of product between home shopping, 189 infomercials, e-commerce, and a lot of other venues. But mostly I, I made a massive living on television. Mm -hmm. and it, you could literally print money. That, remember, you remember the infomercials. You'd wake up going, why do I want to buy that Chia Pet or that Snuggie? Well, I was one of those people who sold those things to you. And I sold a lot of things to you for about 20 years. And all the way to Jack Malane. Well, that was the pinnacle of my career. Wow. I had a chance to stand next to Jack and Elaine Malane. He's the man who invented juicing. Um, you know, he invented the word fitness back in the 19, late right. 1930s. There were no fitness clubs. He, he created the very first health club and he got crucified for it. Lisa, he was told that people who look in the mirror too much or he used to wear this one piece jumpsuit, they, they said all kind of negative things and it was not a very easy beginning. In fact, Jack had a lot of challenges along the way but the thing that he did and this is what you all listening need to know he made a decision when he was about 15 years old he talked about being a skinny scrawny kid and he went to a health lecture like you're here right now right and i will tell you that one hour one man can change your life that's how my name got changed yes one mentor one hour and jack went home that night and he threw out all the sugar all the candy and the cake and he decided to learn all about health and nutrition and set on this path that for decades changed the way everybody works out. It's why we have a health club in every hotel on every corner because of Jack LaLanne. And I was lucky enough to stand next to him and talking about juicing. Because mm. here's the problem with all of us right now, especially as we're stressed out. 
you don't get enough chance to feed your body with nutrition. And it's really important because I don't care what you say you want to do. They tell you to put your mask on first, because if you don't survive, if you're not feeding your body well, if you're munching on crap food, you're going to feel like crap. Jack used to say garbage in, garbage out. Garbage out. He also taught my kids, if man made it, don't eat it. That's the ultimate diet. Lisa, what does that mean to you? If man made it, don't eat it. That means if anything is in a box or a can, you can it. What? <laughs> That's very funny. I love that. But it's challenging because we live in a world where it seems to be hard to get that. And a lot of people think it's very easy to pop something into a microwave, which destroys the molecules of your food. Right. And then we wonder why we have dis-ease because your body is basically dis-ease within itself. And so that's been a passion of mine. It's not the only thing that I do, but if I don't do that, I don't have this energy. I don't have my body. I don't have my health. I don't have my life. And so many of you guys forfeit that going, no, nah, I'll, I'll eat better tomorrow. I don't know when tomorrow comes. But before COVID, there were so many people that are on the go. They eat in the car. They shave in the car. They do their lipstick in the car until they get to work. And after that, it's like a run-on especially mothers, who, especially single parents or moms who are career women, which comes to me, it's like asking you, how do you balance doing everything that you do with your personal home life? You don't balance shit. You're always like on a teeter-totter. And if you think you balance it, baloney. That's one of the problems. <laughs> you know, magazines and people like me, we put out, oh, it's easy to balance. You just do these three things, drink enough water, eat the good food, bullshit. That's not true. The truth is it's never balanced. It's always yeah. one side or the other. But what you have to do is you have to create your own paradigm. So when I was, uh, when my kids were little, I've got 17 year old twins now. McKenna called me one day, I was at a, at a conference and I always called my kids in the morning to say, I love you and say hi before school. And she was about eight years old. And she said, mommy, do you love me? Do you still love me? Oh. I woke up and you're not here. And I thought, now I could do that whiny thing that parents do and say, oh, of course, baby, blah, 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 blah. I didn't say that. I created a paradigm for her and I to have a good conversation. And I said, McKenna, did the sun come up today? And she said, yeah. I said, great. Every day that the sun comes up, you need to know that I love I you. I love it. Oh. When you first met oh. me, you oh. came to me. Oh, with we're, we're playing me in the background, me doing me. Well, because we just went live. I'm, there's so many places to go live and, and follow everyone. But so we created a paradigm. So what you have to do is you have to carve out, now, especially since we're home, many of you don't have routines. Many of you don't realize what time you need to do something, that you do need to carve out a moment to eat, that you do need to stop your work day. And by the way, I'm actually kind of preaching to the choir because I just launched a new business in the last eight weeks. And we were working 18 hour days, sleeping in the office, which is now around the corner from my bedroom. But we knew there was an end date and it's okay to go on a sprint, but you can't live your life like that. And so what I ask everyone to do, Lisa, who comes to my classes, comes to my trainees to get very real with themselves. We start out with, what do you want? That's right. You want, you know, if you're someone who says to me, I want a billion dollars, I won't coach you. Right. I don't want you to have a billion dollars. I don't. It's not that I have a lot of billionaire friends. They work their, their butts off. Mm. One, of my, one of my friends, she just sold her vitamin company to Nestle for $250 million. And I sat there and thought, wow, you know, if I'd done some things differently, I could have done that at this age. And then she called me. Very funny how this happened. And she said, Forbes, I know you've taken your business a step at a time. And by the way, that still equates to millions. You're right. And she said, I wouldn't have traded what, I, I would like to do what you did. I wish I'd kept mm -hmm. it more of a cottage business because her son at 45 killed himself. Right. Now, why did he do that? Because she was a massively absentee mom. She was so focused on all of her employees. I have very few employees. I run a nice business, but right now I'm running it with my daughter. That's true. I got to tell you, the money is nice. That's amazing. The relationship, the relationship, the time I'm having at home with my kids, creating a business, how much money at some point do you need? And you have to sit down and go, wow, how much do I need? What kind of car do I need to drive? Because if that's what makes you happy to go get the Ferrari, go get it. It, uh, having a Ferrari in the driveway would not make me an ounce happier. And in fact, it would kind of freak me out because it's too low a car. It's too fast. I'm going to go to the, where do I go? And why do I need to invest that on the depreciating asset? And so I taught my daughter how to invest that money wisely. And yes, we have a very nice TV. Do I need a bigger one? No, I don't. I don't need another. I loved when Jane Fonda appeared at the Academy Awards this last year. 
She wore a dress that she wore six years ago. Now, when you're an actress at that level, they take pictures of you and they chronicle what you wear. She made a statement and she said, I don't need to ever buy another dress. Dress. She's in her 80s. I just, I'm actually going through my closet. I could wear a different outfit probably for the rest of my life every day and still not go through my closet. But yet I would find myself in the store trying to buy something new. Do you know how much waste we do with all of the products that we buy and consume and the tchotchkes, this and the that, and I w- stop. But there is a part of us that it's so much of what we do. It's an emotional buying, emotional eating, emotional drinking, and everything is an emotional. So it's to satisfy um, what I call that in, in a hole of not feeling good enough. Well, maybe we fill the hole with something much more productive, mm. much less shallow than a new car or a new dress. Now, don't get me wrong. I like retail therapy. I think it's kind of fun. It's always kind of fun to get something new. But I stopped a lot of all that. And COVID was a massive wake up call. And it really should be for you. For Let's go all. back to what do you want? If you want to buy a dress because you feel less than, then what you want is to go fix yourself. That's why we teach breakthrough training. That's yes. why actually, and there are a few of us on the planet who teach, you're a coach, you do this, I do this. There's probably a lot of people. When you find a coach though, make sure you've got someone who is very skilled at what they do. What I've discovered since COVID hit is everybody's a coach. Mm-hmm. You know, I just turned 60, Lisa. I will tell you, with age comes a little bit of wisdom. If you tell me that you're 22 and you're a life coach, my response is call me back when you get a life. There's right. things that experience teaches you. So find it. I would find an older, I would find a couple of coaches. There's things that you need coaches for money, coaches for business, coaches for emotional. Exactly. If you are one of those who are an emotional eater, an emotional shopper, and you're always looking to fill something outside of yourself, let's go back to my initial question. What do you want? So Lisa, play with me for a second. What do you, what, what do you, what, well, but I mean, I need your audience to see this because it's an exercise that we all do in class. But right. I, had, I had Joe Theismann on the phone yesterday. He's an award-winning MVP, one of the most famous football players ever. And you know what he said to me? Because we're doing the One Habit book, which we should tell everybody about. Right, exactly. He said his one habit is to write it down and know what you want. Mm. Like, oh, yes, yes, yes. All right, so my question to you is, Lisa, what do you want? That's one of the exercises we did. Uh, how I started this topic was having you on a stage with me at my free event but now that this has become a reality i want to start with the 30 uh, 30k a month well but actually no actually let's go back for a second lisa wanted me on a stage with her when she met me so i'm looking at my hair it's, it's so weird when you can like see yourself I and mean, he's like how do you do anyway but do you hear so lisa's want was to want me on stage i did not know her when she said that and now we're on her broadcast together and now we are friends now we've done classes together so if you even call me on my cell phone i know (laughs) how did you do that it's very simple you wanted it we call it forbsing it how to manifest Manifest. no one thinks it's true and then by the way part of the free gift will be one of my books what i do in my book is i outline how do you know what you want well it's called grubhub it's really Mm -hmm. simple when you call grubhub and you say hey what do you want ma'am well, I'm hungry. Well, we know that. That's why you call this. What do you want? Listen to this. Well, I want food. That's nice. What do you want? Uh, oh, and then you say, I don't know. And they're like, they hang up. If you don't know who does, stop saying, I don't know. Exactly. Well, then you call them and say, all right, so uh, I want a hamburger. No way to have it yesterday. I want maybe it's maybe Chinese. Oh, no, that's fattening. Again, now you're confused. They hang up. Well, that's how the universe works. But if you say, hey, Grubhub, yeah, I want a Caesar salad, extra chicken, croutons on the side. At your door in about 25 minutes, Caesar salad, extra chicken, croutons on the side? How did they know? Because you told them. So Lisa had the courage to do that. So as you're going to play this game in your mind, what do you want? Then Lisa said, I want 30K a month. Great. Here's the funny thing. If you tell us how much money you want, we can architect it back. So Lisa, let's say you want 30,000 a month. Is that what you want? (laughs) Let's do this. Watch this. Here's how this works and doesn't. So Lisa, if you said that you wanted 30,000, you make X amount per hour, right? Right. Because right, you charge, let's let's pick a number. Maybe let's say 200 an hour. That's a good thing, right? Can we do a math <laughs> equation? If you work, now do the math for me. If you worked 40 hours a week, let me find my calculator here. 
If you work 40 hours a week times $200 an hour, that's $8,000 a week times four is exactly $32,000. Now, that means that number one, every hour of 40 hours, somebody has to pay a weight, but you can't work that much because you have lunch. So let's now, whip. so maybe now you're only working 30 hours because you have to eat or get your nails done times two hundred dollars. <laughs> no, but watch this. If she keeps doing the same job that she's doing times say 30 hours, that's $6,000 a week times four, uh-oh, that's only 24,000 a month. So maybe you can't just do that with the job that you're doing. You have to find another side hustle to get to that. But do you see how this is a math equation? It is. It is. And it's, it's amazing. Not. It's the same as when my clients come in here and I ask them, what is it that you want? Because it's not what we don't want in life. It's what it is that we want. We move forward towards our most desired outcome. So everything that we do, you do the same thing. But here's my question. What experience in your life set you on a different path that you had planned? Well, let's see. Was it the murder? To be where you are, to was, was have it, this success. Was it the murder of my son that I raised for 12 years? He was a, uh, he was a, 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 a oh, that's funny. I, I, um, kind of a foster type child. Um, we raised Dexter for 12 years of his life and he was murdered. That had a big impact on my life. Was it the fact that Joshua and I, my fiance, were eyewitnesses to the Las Vegas shooting? Of, we were in the Mandalay Bay videotaping, watching people die at a concert as we watched the guy shoot them. That might've had something to do with it. Was it the death of both of my parents at age 70 from too much smoking and bad food? Maybe that had something to do with it. Was the fact that I was a very ugly little kid who had a broken nose and braces for eight years, that had something to do with it. Was the fact that I lost nine of my friends who were all firemen when the second building came down in 9-11, that had something to do with it. Let me go down the list. I go down the list of bullshit shit that's happened to me or for me in my life. Right. Life is a roller coaster. Now, if you wanted to be a, a straight line, you enjoy that. That means you're never gonna have the highest of highs because while those were the lowest of lows that anybody could ever experience, I've also gave birth to two very healthy, beautiful children. I've won the Academy Awards of my industry. I have grossed two and a half billion. I've been on television with Kim Kardashian, with Billy Mays, with Paula Abdul, with, I could go down the list. So I've had the highest of highs. I've, I've worked on Broadway. I've been, I've been the star of a television series. I starred in a movie. I starred, not an extra. I freaking starred in a feature film, not more than one. So if you're going to get those highs, apparently the universe says, guess what? Roller coasters just don't keep going up like the stock market does. It goes up and it goes down. And if you're not prepared for the down, your life is over. Because there are some of the lowest lows that you could have ever imagined that I have lived through, worked through, and get this, benefited from. Right. I don't take the times that people hurt me or lost money or screwed me over as negative anymore. I take it as fuel to fire a mission that I'm on that is so big that I wouldn't expect any less to have happened to me. When you listen to Oprah, that woman was raped. That woman gave birth to a stillborn child. That woman was prejudiced against because of the color of her skin to make, she was felt worthless and she's a billionaire. I right. listened to Tony Robbins. He was beaten by his mother on a regular basis. They were hungry. They had no dad. They had, that's why he's who he is. Right. So I'm going to look at you right now and ask you, what's the worst that's happened in your life? And you take that not as a horrible thing, but as fuel <clears throat> that fires the mission that you're on. One of my students was repeatedly raped by her brother in elementary school, and mom wouldn't listen to that. She's on a massive mission to help other women be heard. Another one of my girls was also, I don't know what the whole rape thing is about. I will tell you, it is rampant among men and women. And molestation of little children is on the rise because they're locked away in their houses right now. But the only saving grace I know is that if you choose to live through this and choose to survive the really bad moments, because a lot of people check out. For me, checking out was never an option. If you don't check out and you choose to stay on the roller coaster, strap yourself in, find a great coach and a good group of people around you and go for the ride of your life until it's over. Don't choose to leave because it's not good for a lot of people. 
But most of you who are suffering are alone. Most of you who are suffering don't reach out. If you're within the sound of my voice, and if you know somebody who should hear the sound of my voice, find this, lead, find this podcast, find this broadcast, because the worst that happens is when you're alone. Lisa, I will tell you the moment that changed my life was I was in my early 20s. I was in New York City on my own. And I ended up living in a, a, a four-story walk-up apartment because I liked the man who had access to something in my industry. But he was also just recovering as an alcoholic. Mm. It took me one night to an AA meeting. And I'm like, I don't need to go. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't need this. And he said, no, you don't need it. I just, I need you to come with me. I need the support. So I showed up. And you know what I witnessed for the first time in my life when I was in my early 20s? I witnessed people sharing their souls, telling their story, crying in front of other people, asking for help. I'd never, didn't, that's not how I grew up. We just stuffed everything down. I stuffed all my emotions down and it popped out in my ass and I was overweight. That's where I learned that if you reach out and go to meetings, that's what that initially was. I was blown away, Lisa, by people. I'm not an alcoholic, but I knew that person's story. I knew that person's story. That Everything resonated with me and a light bulb went off and said, whoa, it's, I'm not the only one who feels this way. I'm not the only one who feels lonely and lost and less than. Everybody seems to do that. And when I keyed into that, I said, wow, all right. And I strapped the buckle of my, my little, my roller coaster ride and said, I'm going to go for this. I'm going to feel uncomfortable. I created a company called Strippergram, where I did singing and stripping telegrams in public. That's how on the ride I was ready to go. I'm like, how outrageous can I be? I did a strippergram on the floor of the stock exchange and stopped the stock exchange for at least five minutes. We're talking, I pushed this envelope, but I also had some, I had some very important core values. Even though I said the word strippergram, my core value said no sex and no nudity. Right. I was the cutest little stripper in a little bikini you've ever seen, but I had serious morals. And I decided to get on this ride and see how far I could push it. And I punked people because I had no power. And I'm working on this to be a series because I think it's one of the most powerful stories. And I was ashamed to tell this for years. I now can't wait. I'm 60 years old. I can't wait to say everything that works and everything. I don't know if the, I want to turn off the news. I want to turn off the energy that's negative. I want to invest time in you. Come to our class on Sunday where we are literally changing people's lives. We are. That's the mission that I'm on. Yes, we are. And it is one of the, one of the best group classes. Uh, and that's, that's why I continued on with going to the next level, to the next level, not only for me to experience it, because I think every single person needs another person to bounce back to, and it's not about a power game. It's sometimes we bundle up a lot of emotions and we just need a place that we can be accepted. What I tell my clients, I hold space for you. And that's exactly what you do. You hold space and you, and I have said this very lovingly, you lovingly push buttons. <laughs> Me? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know why? You know why I have to push buttons? So who was your mentor? Oh, I have a bunch. I'll tell you why I push buttons. I push buttons because limiting beliefs are hard to shatter. Yes. People come to me and they tell me, I can't do this. I'm this and I'm, you have 50 years of that in your head. I'm going to determine to let you know that that's not going to work anymore. Some of my mentors, and I've had the best, Elaine Lalane. she's 94 years old. She doesn't wear eyeglasses. She's not sick. 94, she drives, she has energy. She works out every morning. She juices. She, how, I mean, that's the ultimate role model ever. And I have her on speed dial. Uh, right. Les Brown. Les yep. is one of my friends and fans. I didn't even know who he was. I, the first time I met him, it was at a private dinner. I am insanely blessed by watching. He is the king of pitch. He is the smoothest talking man. I watched him give a speech in front of 80,000 people. This man calls me on the phone and says, Forbes, I want to talk to you. I want you to change this. I want you to, I'm like, that's like God. Like God. He's hungry <laughs> for love. Wow. So, oh, you got to be hungry. I know. These, these are mentors, Sharon Lecter. By the way, these people are now in my book. We have a book coming out called What a Habit. It's fun. And I'm not only them, but Marla Gibbs from 227 is in the book. Thanks to Dr. Kim. 
I reached out and said, I just want to know you people. Jane Fonda is a, is a, one of my role models, one of my mentors. Um, I could go down the list and it, I didn't even know that you could have mentors. Mm. You know who's a mentor of mine? The 17 year old little girl in the other room, my daughter. My daughter, Tess, she said this morning, so funny, we're in the kitchen. She said, mom, I think I just needed, you just needed me to grow up a little bit because now I can help. Because oh. she's been traveling with me and my sidekick since she was six years old. She would go to HSN. She went to Europe with me to shoot our infomercial. We've traveled the world together. We've been to China and Germany and, we, and she's always been there. But she was my kid and she was amazing. And then one day she started solving problems in my world. She saved my company at eight years old. She saved us $48,000 because she saw something that none of the adults saw. And I'm like, wow. She surprises me all the time. She's got a book coming out called Every Company Needs a Kid. And eight weeks ago, she started a company with me, for me, around me. And she's grossed over $100,000. She's 17. Right. She makes me sit here. It's like, mom, just do what I'm telling you to do. Because <laughs> as an awesome adult- on that quick funnel thing. It's so much more. As an adult, you and I, we get distracted. We, I've got 50 years of bullshit. She's only 17. She hasn't been screwed over by men. She's not thinking about dating just yet. She's focused on one thing. And I will tell you guys, when you're only focused on one thing, that thing works, that materializes. And either it materializes or it fails. And then you move on to the next thing. You don't do like all of us adults do and try, oh, I've got eight things going on. I'm an author, I'm a speaker. One thing. It has been the most brilliant thing to watch this girl she has employees right now. She, it's like, who are you? You are my mentor. Don't let her hear that though. Her head's going to swell. You know what I love about you? You are so genuine. You are all heart. And when you coach, yes, you push buttons. You have experience. You have everybody on your speak dial. But then you come down to this humbleness, this genuine, just, just like I'm just a woman. I'm just one of you. I am human. And you bring your kids, you give them a kiss. And even when we are in coaching, and that is one of the things that, although I'm doing this one-on-one, -on -one, I, I do events and everything in, in our group retreats, the sense of love that it's in your home, in your living room, it's absolutely amazing. Thank you. This took work. 42 years to have kids. It took 57 years to find love. It has been a journey. I, you know, Lisa, I didn't grow up with any of the things that I have now, except love. Mm. I had two parents who thought the world began and ended with me. Even though I was an ugly, goofy little kid, I was a straight A student. I won a national beauty pageant when I was just 16 because I needed money to go to college. Uh, I did a lot of things so I could prove to my parents that their love was in the right place. Isn't that funny? Uh, I couldn't wait to call them when I would get a job. I'm on Broadway. I'm doing a movie. My dad's actually an extra in one of my movies. I wanted them <laughs> to be so proud of me. And I have no cousins and aunts and uncles. My mom was an only child and never saw my dad's brother. So it's always been other people have been my family. If you are a friend of mine, if I loved on you, you're still in my life. My very first boyfriend, Gary Bettman, 21, stole my heart. You know what? He is now happily married. I love his wife. He's the godfather to my daughter. Who's my first boyfriend? Mm -hmm. My second boyfriend, Hugh. Hugh O'Brien is a stuntman. I love these men so much like brothers I never had. I don't want to discard people. If you love, and there's a couple of them who have, you know, who can't be around whatever because it's not going that direction. Right. But I've only loved on a few, you know, on people. And when I started teaching class for real, I started in my living room. I used to be a massage therapist. I broke my, I'm, a, I'm, you want to come to my coaching because I don't have a traditional life. And I am willing to share that because most of my life, I did it all by myself before social media. So you didn't see me at Club Med for almost 10 years designing game shows and, and working with audiences of 800 to 1,200 people every night um, or at ski resorts doing stand-up comedy 
and or at the X Games where I created helped create the X Games for ESPN. I was the first host wow. in the first years. You know, no one ever saw any of that. So it was a very lonely existence on some level. I went to Europe. I made, I, I grew a huge business in England. You know what that means? That meant I fly, I flew from LA to London 48 times in six years on my own. That's an 11 hour flight each way. Kind of lonely when you get there, you go. So I was always alone before. That's why I love, I, I love Facebook. Facebook's like, you know, live, they saved my life. The night that Joshua got into his, his he was in a horrible motorcycle accident. And uh, again, I don't have family aside from my kids and I don't want to stress them out. So I, there's, you know, there's friends to call, but I actually took it to Facebook live. And I said for all my friends who watch and we share this relationship, because I think true friendship as an adult is not somebody who hangs out with you all the time. Right. Who has time for that? That's maybe your significant other, but my friends, Denise Rendazzo, I met Denise when I was 14 years old. You know how long that friendship is? She's my oldest friend, uh, not my oldest friend, but my oldest relationship. Right. And I don't see her, well, I see her once a year. I know her kids. I watch them grow up. I know her husband. We all went to high school together. Actually, we had great stories, but we check in once a month because she, there's not enough time. But she'll exactly. always be one of my best friends. Janet will always be one of my best. You can't leave if I love you. And when I started teaching, and I think this is great for anybody who teaches anything. You learn about yourself. Mm. You watch people grow. I remember my sixth grade science teacher, Mr. Milch. I loved him. I had such a crush on him. I took him out to dinner not long ago. Oh, and I thought you, you took him out to dinner when you were in high school. <laughs> yeah, no, that would not have worked. That probably would have been illegal. And I did have a terrible crush on Mr. Milch. Um, but we went, we went out to dinner and I, I just... I said, you, you loved your students so much. Mm. You inspired me. That must feel so good. And so being a teacher, I think everybody should teach something they know. I've been teaching dance class and I've been teaching hosting class since, since day one. Actually, this is really funny too to realize, but I've never had a job. I've always created the jobs. So I can remember in college, I used to teach dance. I used to teach tap dancing. When I got out of college, I went to the learning annex. I started teaching how to host. Teach what you know. I've always been teaching. I've always been coaching. I didn't even know that. It's really kind of funny when I look back on it. And then about 15 years ago, I decided to teach this whole breakthrough concept. I said, I think I know something. I've been a massage therapist, but I didn't like just doing the massage. I would do the massage and then get into people's heads. But I realized one-on-one, -on -one, one, my thumbs were giving out, and two, people were crying in my house a lot. It was weird. So I started interesting that you say that because I did massage for about 15 years and I was did doing really? it. Of course. 15 I mean, years I didn't know that about you. Yay. Not only that, I had a crew of seven people who were working with me. I had a contract with the Glendale Hilton for over 10 years that we used to massage from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. And, and then when I learned how to help clients release their trauma and pain that's when i started doing the hypno massage while i was doing the massage i would ask them tap into their subconscious release that pain and trauma in order for them to because muscle has memory you and i we're the same, wait a second like, Robert, we're the same person we that are did you ever do rolfing yes i did all right well that there's not many people on the planet who know what rolfing is i did as well and that's it's called pain <laughs> Oh, massive pain. <laughs> pain. Yeah, that's why I don't mind doing a little pain with my clients. Because if you've ever been rolled, you can do anything in life. Yes. So I, this is why I adore you. Because I saw so much of the similarities. Yeah. And, yeah. And it was like, she's my girl. She's yeah. my lady. And this is what I wanted. That's why I emailed you about a month before I even signed up. And, you know, it's this. This is what took me in. Go ahead, tell them. I, no, I would love for you to explain why do I want this versus gel pen? Ah. Uh. Right. Well, that's actually, that's interesting. I wouldn't do that necessarily because it's the actually instrument of writing. Although I have, you know, it's funny. I've created a new class. 
Aha, uh -huh. another uh, one. Yeah, they keep up that. with your classes. Well, I'll tell you what, <laughs> you have to fill a need. So we bring people into this idea of pitching. Yes. So were you on were you on Sunday's class? That's okay. It's not a big Sunday the night, yes, because it was our three hour, okay. not the one before. And I don't know how you do this, girl. You must have a massage uh, chair. I love this. I will <laughs> tell you. So on Sunday's class, we had 60 some odd people on the Zoom call. Right. And a lot of my students have gone through this. And what you're talking about is a specificity of how you pitch something. How do you enroll somebody to buy what you want? And for me, it starts with just how you introduce yourself. And so what was interesting this particular Sunday, because there were so many newcomers, right. is none of them introduced themselves in a way that was hyper-engaging. Mm. Now, it wasn't wrong. That's, and I, by the way, what I learned was I can't, you know how hard I am on you guys at the highest yes. level? Yes, I push you guys and we've had great results. But I can't push newcomers. That's not fair. I think I freak some people out because I know I can see what, no, but I can see how they can make money so fast. I'm like, Wait, just do this. Like, so I said, you know what? I'm creating another class on Tuesdays. It's going to be two hours long. And I'm just going to give you your pitch. Beautiful. Now, you don't learn how to decide. Right, so watch this. So give me an occupation and I'll show you how this works. Any occupation. A postman. Okay, so normally it would say, uh, you know, I'm a postman. Like, you ask me what I do. What do you do? I deliver the mail. Now ask me again. Forbes, what do you do? I have one of the most unique jobs in the world. I get to deliver letters and packages, especially around Christmas time, that make people happy. You've never seen an expression of somebody that runs to the mailbox. I do this because my dad served in the war and used to write my mom a letter every week. And so mo the most important moment of the week was where we would take a knife and we would open that handwritten letter and I would read it. And I've decided to devote my life to being a postman. Oh, I can't wait to write you something now. <laughs> you do this and how do you dissect to get there is there's a touch of the why, a touch of what you want to hear, and you never answer the question. But you ask the question every day, what do you do? Exactly. And if you say, I'm a digital marketer, I'm a therapist, I'm a massage, you, you blow it. You blow the most beautiful opportunity that you have. That, and by the way, you can't over talk it. Ask me, do it again. Give me another, give me another anything. Try and stump me, girl. Stump you. Um, that's a good one. Stump you. Well, it doesn't matter. Just, I, it's, it's new to everybody else listening. I make, I make little, uh, little dices that goes into a machinery that goes and is being used in the airplane. Then you're not on my call. <laughs> <laughs> I drilled a hole in that machine. <laughs> well, and, so, so you're basically working in a factory, right? I'm yeah. a factory worker who drills holes. And if you're on the call, you say, I'm a factory worker who drills holes. Now, what I would say is don't answer that question because we can't hire you as a factory worker. My question to you would be, what is your side hustle? Oh, well, I also like to sell uh, legal. I like to sell legal advice. I work with a company that does that on the side. That's what I would pitch. So one of the big mistakes that you all make, all, when you're asked what you do, here's your response. Oh, I do so many things. I'm an author of two books and I, I like to roller skate and I'm also a massage therapist and I did it, did it. We had a girl who said, I'm gonna use this just as an example. She didn't know what the game was. She said, I'm a vision expert who's written two books and that, and she started talking and I'm like, wow. Well, I don't understand what you do. She said, but I'm a vision expert. I still don't understand what you do. And here's why you have to come to class. Because when you say jargon like that, you don't inspire a story in us. You don't inspire us to give you money. You don't even inspire us to care. That is the secret of pitching versus selling. Mm. If one more person tells me why they do something, I just want to help people. We all want to help people. That's what we do. If you if you own a gas station, you help people. If you own a dog grooming store, everybody helps people. So get a little more specific. Exactly. Enroll us really quickly. So give me one more occupation. A clinical hypnotherapist. 
a clinical hypnotherapist. Now, in any normal situation, if I asked Lisa on a big summit call, you would say, hi, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. And we would go, okay, who cares? Number one, Lisa, you would say, hey, Forbes, thank you so much for asking me. You know, I've been on the Zoom call and I really love watching what you're doing. That moment of edification makes you human. Now, it's not the answer to the question what you do, but who, t- nobody needs to give you permission to say something else. Right. Then you would say, Forbes, as somebody who's suffered for years with depression, I was close to being suicidal. I discovered that hypnotherapy is the greatest gift on this planet. Instantly, almost instantly, it heals people. I've now taken almost 10,000 people through my program. And if you or anyone you know suffers at all, please look me up. I didn't need to give my website. You fell in love with me because I was honest about my situation. By the way, I made all that up. And I want to know more about clinical hypnotherapy now. So what I know intuitively, this is how I've sold so much, is I almost know what my audience is thinking as and before I say it. So let me ask you a question. I'm going to, I have a piece of paper right here, okay? Uh, do you want to see something cool? Sure. There you go. I knew you were going to say yes. How would I know that? How would I know that? Here's another one. Wait, no, let me do another one. This is kind of cool, right? Uh, oh, here. This. I'll write another one. Uh, I went to a, I went to a, and because you know it asked the right way, I went to a, a business training last week, right? right? While I was at the business training, I lost six pounds. Crazy, right? What's the first thing you're thinking? How? How? How did I know that you're going to say how? Because I don't ask questions that I don't know the answer to. Exactly. So I'm not going to waste time telling you what I do. I'm going to enroll you into my life because I need you to be a customer, client, friend, lead. Exactly. Uh, Forbes, when we are, I mean, here we have an audience from all kinds of uh, careers, businesses, backgrounds, uh, family people, uh, single women, career women. Uh, when we are thinking of changing anything in life and what is it that our want is, do we really need to know what our end game is? What are no, 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 no. That is a brilliant question. Okay. The least favorite question on this planet for me is what is your five-year plan? You've got to be kidding me, right? If I told you five years ago that I would be here, by the way, you didn't know COVID was coming. I don't believe in five-year right. plans. I don't know what that is. However, I do believe in the end in mind, but in small moments. That is a great question. Here's what you need to change first. If you don't like your life, change your vocabulary. Change your communication to you and to other people. I will guarantee if I were to talk to you right now and you're not like, you're not, not very happy, the words that come out of your mouth sound like, oh, I can't do this. It's hard. It's difficult. I don't know. You know, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, if you start to erase those words, your communication gets clearer. When you do that, it's just like taking chocolate out of your diet if that's the only change you make and you keep the exact same diet, you're liable to lose weight. <gasps> Just that one change? Yes. And then like a sailboat over time, you make another change and then you end up in a very different place over time. Exactly. We have discovered the way the brain talks to your mouth and you talk to other people. We hear say, it first. Say what you want. Don't keep telling us, and Lisa, you said this earlier, stop telling us what you don't want. We can't do anything about that. Exactly. Like unsuccessful people, yeah, that might be you, have a language pattern that destroys them, that is sabotaging what they think they want. Start with that. But so many of us, and I'm saying us because I know I have been there. We have this, it's not my fault, it's a blame game. And I don't want to call it victim because that may be a bit too far, but we blame circumstances and everybody has a circumstance. And that's why I say my heal within comes from evoking what was, which is the history. It's understanding the history, embracing the reality, which is what you are here to do. And breakthrough is get rid of that. It's evoking the history. And it's like, it no longer matters what are you doing now to get to where you want. 
And here I am, or here is Forbes, and here is the, our entire team together, helping you through this transition to be where you want to be, which is what I love Christian has created is, oh let's my gosh. Forbes this, right? That's what so Christian just made, like, let me tell you something, Christian just made $500 yesterday doing something I told him to do. <laughs> so stop complaining that you don't add, literally add him on the phone today, and he's like, Forbes, I opened my account. There was $500 there. I'm like, I know. <laughs> you, you have a decision to make right now. Everyone who's listening to this program, you can keep doing what you always are doing and have been doing, and you will get the results that you've always gotten. If you want to live a more extraordinary life, you will listen to Lisa. Lisa has an offer to come play with us for free or for $19. Exactly. Yeah, there, there's a code literally for $19. Come on Sunday and hang out with us. Yes. We are a group of people who speak differently, who are empowered, who are making money in one of the worst times ever because we don't watch the news on a regular basis. Because the news wants to fill your head right now with fear. Jargon. I know there's a virus out there. I know all kinds of things. I don't need to see it every day, every night. I will tell you, you wanna be successful, stop blaming. That goes for everybody's lives because that's what matters. Right. I can come up with 50 excuses from everybody. And I raised a little black kid from South Central for 12 years of his life. I understand. He came to me with a thinking pattern. He literally said things like, when I went to visit my ex-father-in-law who lived on a big hill in a big house, he said to me, well, this is where white people live. Mm -hmm. I said, no, actually, that man's Hispanic. Those are three black couples and there's a Chinese guy there. So I don't know where you got that limiting belief, my friend, that it has anything to do with that. And I'm not making a political statement, but I will tell you, if you're a woman, if you're disabled, if you're blonde, if you're brunette, if you're black people, we've, I've been, I was bullied all the time. We and label we, ourselves. We do. We absolutely do. Yeah. And By it's way, about time we peel away those labels. We peel away the labels that has been placed upon us or we took it upon us. Sometimes we take it upon us because we have to appease someone else, either a mom or a dad or someone that we care or love. And those labels, it just adds. And it's heaviness, heaviness on our emotions, our mental, especially our body. And I segue to body... <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's do it. Where's your spin gym? Uh, okay, bring your spin gym. I want us to segue to this uh, incredible thing. Okay. Uh, if you're watching on my Facebook Live, I, I yes, yes, I can't do this and spin gym at the same time, so I don't have. Where are <laughs> you? Are, Will you hold this for a second? I don't have a. I need to spin gym. <laughs> and I don't want to lose. You know, we've got we've got wonderful friends on here. All right, so hang on a second. I'm gonna put you guys down, and don't go. Okay. Don't go away. All right. So here's what you do. What yes. you're looking at. Okay. So I'm going to wind it up. Mine's in pink. Yours is in purple. Side. And by the way, I don't know if you've seen the sexiest spin gym. Have you ever seen this one? <gasps> what is that? Oh, I know. Guys, I said, this is my glitter spin gym. All right. So Tatum, do you It's with glitter and vibrates. <laughs> glitter and vibrates. And you hold that on the screen right there so they can see the screen. Come down over here. Everybody say hi to Tatum. Tatum is one. Oh, she's absolutely beautiful and fun. Oh, you hold that. You can see that screen. Yes, hey, actually, this one's all in diamonds. Wow. I know, right? Now, we don't play with this one because the diamonds like to fall off. And then I hang them on all kinds of... This is one of my hangers. Uh, where's another one of my hangers? I have... Uh, <laughs> I've got, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. Oh, oh. Okay, this is another way that I put my spin gym. I hang it here on her. I have it sitting on my desk. So, I mean, seriously, like the sexiest way to exercise ever. Are uh, you taking a picture? I gotta take a picture. Yeah, yes. so no, don't block your face. Okay. There you go. Okay. I love that. So here's what this is. This is the coolest fitness product on the planet. You know why? Yes. Because you can do it on a Zoom call. Now, if I'm on a treadmill, I'd probably fall on my face. If I'm gonna lift dumbbells, whatever, they were called dumbbells for a reason, right? Right. I take this and I give it a, a tug. And now, if you're stressed, punch for 10. Ooh, like that. If you want to go overhead and you want to work on your, uh, if you hate this, this is the way you do that. 
Then if you want to relax because you're sitting at the desk too long, hello, Forbes Riley, I've been sitting here since four o'clock yesterday in the morning, you take it unwound, take it unwound like this, take it like this, go overhead and go round. Oh, does that like feel amazing other way? Oh, yes. Oh, then watch this. Put two fingers in here with the string behind you. Mm -hmm. Finger string behind you and give it a stretch. And oh, oh, that feels, doesn't that feel great after a long day? Awesome yes. for the back, for the neck, everything. Look and at what I've done. I, the only time I had a muscle like this is when I used to bowl four nights a week. Now ah. I've got it back. It's <laughs> okay. Here, this is based in science. Have you ever seen the science video, by the way? No. Science. <laughs> Yeah, okay. sci-fi and science. Stuff. No, 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 it's not that kind. Do me a favor. Can you make me a co-host? I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. Come here. I don't know how to do things like yes, this. Yes, you do. Don't stop saying I don't know how to do anything. Go over I there. I know. Find stop a live stream. Find, no, no, don't stop yeah, live stream. Where do I do co-host? Next to participants, hit the participants button. You'll see my name up there. Then under the word more, it's a pull-down menu, and it says make host or co-host. And... All of a sudden, I get to share my screen. Is that what? Post. Here you go. You just found something. All right, and I'll give it back to you in a minute. But I want you to see a video that I don't think you've ever seen. Okay, watch this and watch her arms. They're the sickest arms in the world. This is why Spin Gym works so well. And you can, yeah. So you see, you can see my screen, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So watch this. I've never shown this to you guys. You hear that? That is the sound of a groundbreaking scientific device based on a classic toy called a whirly gig. The design has been around for thousands of years, but it wasn't until very recently that anyone developed a physical model for how it works. In the lab, we stumbled upon this wonder. It's the whirly gig, a couple of strings and a little disc, and if I push, it spins. How many of you have played with this as a kid? This is called a button on a string. What you didn't realize, that this little object is the oldest toy in the history of mankind. Right? 5,000 years yeah. ago, we have found relics of this object hidden around on our planet. Now, the irony is, we actually don't understand how this little thing works. If you take the input torque that you put in, you take the drag on this disc and the twist drag on these strings, you should be able to mathematically solve this. Uh, 10 pages of math later, we can actually write down the complete analytical solution for this dynamic system. When you do the math, the maximum speed we've been able to achieve with this object is not 10,000 RPM, not 50,000 RPM, 120,000 RPM. That's equal to 30,000 G-forces. Conventionally, a string has a geometrical limit to what it can coil, and beyond that geometrical limit... And you're someone in the science. Isn't that crazy that it has that much pull to it? Oh my God, that is amazing. Right, I'm, I'm sure that you didn't really know that, right? The next no. thing that you don't realize is... You when I started doing this, I remember the first day, it, 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 I could not do it because... It seems so simple, and yet it is not. It's awesome. Right, and here's why, because it works the same way in everybody. Now, not everybody has muscles like Joshua, but we're all built the same way, and look what fires in his back when he spins. See why spin gym works so well. Check this out. In your thumbs. Go, 10, 9. So now, all my fitness experts, bring it down a little bit lower, stand up really tall. What do you see? So, all of his pecs are fine. You see Dell's fine. You see Av engaged. I'm going to turn you around. It's going to use, just going to use you, right? No, no, stay right there. Just right there. Just pull him tensely. All the strangulation in his shoulders. Look at his entire back. How deep is that firing? I'll tell you. All the way through his entire body. Nice butts. So, Spin Gym looks good coming and going. Yeah. So I can show you videos all day long that will make your heart sting. But the last one I'm going to show you and your audience, because you have a huge heart. Is Not only that, but I want all our audience, whoever is watching here, I want you all know, if you text 818. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on one second. Hang on one second. Okay. This, I want you to know that you should no longer complain ever about life because oh. Pedro is real. That lady. We can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did I just start to unshare? I'm sorry. Okay, wait, yeah. wait. We okay. Could. There you go. So it's the kind of thing, Pedro, I don't know if you know, but when we spin gym, I get people giving me all kinds of excuses saying, oh, I'm so weak in my arms. 
do you think about people who have excuses? Well, I think with excuses, the only person that is getting, you know, problems right there is the person making the excuses, you know. The whole world is going to keep spinning, but the person that makes excuses is going to, it's not going to get anywhere. And that, Lisa, is from a man, a young man who had his arms and legs amputated because of a flesh-eating disease. Oh. I watch this video, and every time I see it, I've known him for more than 10 years. I have no complaints in the world, nor should I ever. Amen. When I think about Pedro, first of all, I think about the most beautiful spirit. But I also think that if he has no help in the middle of the night, he has no arms and no legs. How does he go to the bathroom? How does he touch his baby? How does he, how does he do a lot of things? He's physically, he's managed to, between arms and legs mechanically. But take a moment, everybody right now, and just be grateful for the smallest of things. Look at your fingers, touch your face, exactly. hold yourself and go, I'm grateful that I'm just here. And that's why I've been blessed with people like that in my life, that I am forever grateful. And so now I didn't mean to interrupt you because you're about to tell people how they could get discounts because of you on a spin gym. So now go for it. <laughs> well, thank you for the opportunity for us to gift our audience and for you to even be here. And with that, not only our audience is getting a book, but 15% off of the spin gym. So for all of you, write this down. Actually, we're going to even put it down here at the bottom so that all you have to do is see the link and you will just do that. 818-221-2797. And all you have to do is text SPIN to that number, 818-221-2797, SPIN, and you get 15% off. You know what? I have my purple because my logo is purple, but my lady, I'm going to go for the gold. <laughs> Let me get you a gold one as well. Absolutely. I, I know we've taken a lot of time from everybody. I don't want to spend all day here. Um, Lisa, thank you so much. Is there one more question you'd like to ask before we go? Yes. Would you please end this sentence? Forbes Riley is. You're evil. I learned from the best. Forbes Riley. is one of the most precious souls on the planet. She is a woman who was beaten up emotionally, physically, mentally, and decided to pursue anyway. She is on a mission to help others come out of the darkness and to see their full potential, to experience life at its best, to surround people with people who love you and to make this ride on this planet one of the most extraordinary ever. She is a mom. She is a fiance. She is a best friend. She's a little girl. She is silly. She talks too much. Yes, that one and word turned into a whole sentence. And I absolutely love her now at age <laughs> I have never loved her before. Amen. Amen. I can't believe I said all that, huh? May I re Good. rewind and play this recording for you, for you to always remember how, what a gift you are to millions, if not billions. I love you. Thank you so much. I love you, my lady. Thank you to all of you for being here. And as always, may God bless you and the universal light surround you. Goodbye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you wanna go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, Click right here. See you next time.